What is up, everybody? It's Cody with Blood Money MMA Bets, aka Mr. Pay Per View, also known as the Recession Proof Capper. Let's go. Yeah, man, coming in off another big night, uh, second clean sweep in three weeks. Um, and I'm super pumped about it, man. We got another good card this week. We got UFC Vegas 66, Cannoneer versus Strickland. It's going to be a great card. It's got some really good fights. Armand Sarukian and Demir Ismagulov. Um, Sayyid Nurmagomedov versus uh, Sedio Cub. Oh, man, this is going to be a really, really, really good card. Before we get into this card and the good spots we got, we're going to do a quick little recap of UFC 282. And as you can see, that's why I was fired up. I went 4-0-1 for plus 10 units, my second sweep in three weeks. Um, I was super, super happy to get these wins, man. My four winning bets, I had Santiago Ponce and Nibio with the comeback knockout plus two units on that, man. And um, Alex Morono looked really good, man. And um, Santiago found the way to win. I was super happy about that. Second winning bet was Patty Pimblett for plus two units. Super close fight. Um you know, could have went either way. Probably could have went Jerry Gordon's way. Nobody would have been mad. But, um, yeah, I did win two units on that, but they they got me back with the 1.5 units on Megamed. The uh, MMA gods made it even, and I'm fine with that. I always want to be even or the universe owing me something, not me ever owing, and uh, never know when it's coming. Third winning bet was Drikus Duplessis, plus 2.5 units. And, man, I thought he was going to stop it in that first round. Then it didn't stop in the first round. And then I thought Darren Till was going to come back. Back and forth fight, man. That fight was crazy. Drikus is a, a soldier. DDP is a soldier, man. So a great win for him. And the fourth win was one of my more confident picks. Billy Q under 2.5 rounds plus 3.5 units. I got that at plus 140. And um, yeah, man, I was super confident in that. Like I said, every single person that's been um uh dropping down in weight lately has been getting finished. And then you're going against the guy that's already bigger than you with more cardio. It just wasn't going to be good no matter what for uh Alexander Hernandez. And my fifth bet was a push with Magomed Ankalaev. Like I said, I thought he won the fight. I thought he won one, four, and five pretty clearly. But uh like I said, I, I don't want to be ahead with the guy. So I won two units on Patty and then the, I should have won 1.5 units there at push. So you know, pretty much back to even, and that's that's the way I want it to be, man. Plus 10 units. You know, my units are $100, so plus $1,000 on the night last night. I won 1150 uh, two events ago. So, uh, yeah, man, we're, we're up over 80 units, man. My official bet record is 177 and 122 for plus 80.1 units, man, and I'm, I'm stoked about that. Um, I didn't know if I was going to get over 80 this year, but I did. Next year, we will be over 200 over 200 i promise that man we're gonna make nothing but straight straight smooth smart bets sharp bets and uh get a lot more of these man of these uh sweeps i think i've had probably five six seven of these this year so let's go man um we're gonna we're gonna do it again let's get into this um well i got a couple other things to go over and then um we'll get right into this ufc vegas 66 card um new contest for the cards nobody won the contest last week a lot of people had bryce mitchell and stuff and then they had magomed so um i had a lot of two fight parlays that covered with taking magomed off i, I couldn't do the math on them we needed three fights so we're just going to run the contest again this week same cards glover texera autograph um, Billy Q autograph rookie, which is looking real good right now. Zero gone prism prism rookie. That's a really nice rookie. And it, uh, Umar Nurmagomedov, who's going to be fighting coming up rookie, man. So them four cards are for the contest this week. Same as always, just put uh, uh, your best three fight um, parlay in with the odds it pays. And if it hits and um, you're going to win if you got the best odds and if you put it in first. So uh, let's let's do that. Everybody comment, help my algorithm. Everybody like and subscribe to this video. I know you like free money. About to be a recession out there. Like I said, I am the recession proof capper, the bookie smacker. So um, like and subscribe if you want free money. I'll be giving out these picks. Um, there's going to be a live show this Wednesday and this Saturday. On Wednesday, I'll be live with Johnny K. Picks on his channel doing our regular weekly show. And on Saturday, we're going to do a fight companion, I believe, on Lou Betch's channel on the MMA Engine with me, him, Patrick, and Lou Betch's. So everybody check that out. Uh, be looking for that. Also, like I said, I'm going to be starting a Discord starting on probably January 1st. Um, 
I'm going to, it's a Patreon. I'm going to have a discord and then you're going to get access to all my bets. The second I put them in, I'll be posting them in that. Um, so you can beat some line movement. I saved over $550 on line movement just this week in one week. Um, so, uh, yeah, man, I, I do that all year. As everybody knows, if you, if you follow me on my Instagram or anywhere, I put these bets in sometimes a month and a half in advance. And if, if you're on the fence about a fight, not knowing which one to go, and you can have my, uh, opinion on it a month and a half early that will help you out a lot so everybody be checking out for that um because it's, it's going to help a lot of people out all right um we're going to get into this uh we're going to get right into this ufc uh vegas 66 which like i said is going to be a really good card man um it's got some some good fights on it that's going to um determine how, how some weight divisions go coming up First fight that I have is Cody Brundage versus Mikhail Olenjaschik. Um, this is like a late late replacement fight because um, Mikhail uh, Olenjaschik, he actually came in late. Um, he was going to fight, let's see, he was going to fight um, Albert Duryev on short notice after Al uh, Duryev was supposed to fight um, somebody else that got hurt, and then he got hurt. So uh, now it's Olenjaschik versus Cody Brundage out of nowhere. So basically, it's kind of like a short notice fight for both of these guys. Um, Cody Brundage is eight and two. M Mikhail Olin Jacek is 17 and five. Uh, Co Mikhail Olin Jacek's currently sitting at minus 275. Cody Brundage is sitting at plus 220. Um, they're both the same size. Mikhail Olin Jacek has two inches of reach. Cody Brundage, man, if you've watched him fight recently, it's kind of weird. It's hard to figure out. Um, it's hard to figure out really what he's doing uh, against um, Maximov. He got out wrestled, out grappled for three rounds, and he's a wrestler grappler himself. His second fight against Dolce Lungambula, um, he tried to get the takedowns, couldn't get the takedowns. Dolce was beating him up and then um, shot in for that weird uh, shot, you know, when he was beating him up against the fence, could have ended him. Um, so that was super weird. He ended up getting the submission. And then his last fight, he was getting beat up by Treshawn Gore, was not looking good. His, his takedowns... Um, weren't working for him early and Treshawn looked like he was beating him up and then he caught him with a big punch and knocked him out. Um, so he has a little power. He has some wrestling. He has some grappling, but um, not really like great anywhere. And he's not really uh, that that sure about his striking. Mikhail Olin Jacek is very sure about his striking, man. He's got excellent boxing. KO power. You've seen him finish by guys with body shots. You've seen him finish uh, like Sam Elby beat him up. This is going to be a second fight at 185 where he's uh, – along his whole career you know he was up at 205 fighting way bigger guys um he's going to have a giant striking advantage he showed good takedown defense um in his fights I, I know he got taken down against like jimmy crew and beat up but against guys like dustin jacoby and um some of his other more recent fights even sam alvey tried to take him down he actually took sam alvey down which is hard to do um He's looked good, man. His defensive and offensive grappling have looked good. I think that he's going to be able to stop the shots of Cody Brundage early, um, and I think that he's going to be able to uh, get Cody Brundage out of there in the first round. He's going to finish what um, Treshawn Gore and Dolce Lunga Bula could not do. He's going to finish this here. So I got Mikhail Olin Jacek by first round finish. Um, I think that he makes uh, I think that he makes Brundage look bad. To be honest, I think that. Um, He's going to be able to survive that wrestling easy and, and just put a beating on him. Next fight is in the men's middleweight division. We got Brian Battle coming in at 8-1 and one versus Renat Fakradinov coming in at 20-2. and two. Fakradinov, um, I didn't get a line on this yet, um, but uh, it's probably going to be a closer line. So I'm going to give you this breakdown without knowing a line, nothing, you know, to, to sway me in any way. Not that it ever does, but man, Brian Battle, um, really good striking. He's looking really good now that he's dropping down to 170. You've seen him knock out uh, Takashi Soto last fight. Looked really good with that head kick. Up at 185, you know, shows good striking, good cardio, good pace. Um, he can be taken down. He's got a pretty good get-up game, and, and um, he's got really good cardio. So, like, on the Ultimate Fighter, he was able to outlast um, – Petrovsky, who's obviously been looking phenomenal, but he was able to, um, he got taken down at first. He was able to stop his takedowns in the second, landed like a ninja choke on him um, and, and looked really good. And he was, he was a little faster than these 185 guys and he's definitely out cardio them. Um, down here at 170, you know, he's definitely going to have a, a nice um, a nice little speed advantage. He's definitely going to have the striking advantage in this fight. But Renat Fakradinov, where he's different than these other guys that Brian Battle's been fighting, is he has phenomenal wrestling. 
He has really good jujitsu, and he has three rounds of cardio, man. His striking's not bad. He definitely has the striking stand with battle and not look ridiculous. And then um, I, I, before I went into this fight and I did tape study, I thought I was going to pick Brian Battle all the way. I wasn't in, impressed with Renat, and his really in his last his last fight, he actually looked a lot better than he did when I watched his other stuff where he's fighting in the regional scene of Russia. But give me Renat Fakhradinov, actually. I think that. The, di the difference in this fight and other fights Brian Battle had is that Fakhradinov's going to be able to ha hold him down more. I think his wrestling is going to be way too much for Brian Battle. And um, I think that he's going to have the cardio to uh, last all three rounds wrestling and grappling with Brian Battle. So um, I don't know what the line's going to be set at or nothing like that. I would be looking at the over-under and probably looking at the over because I do think Renat grapples him for all three rounds. So um, give me Renat Fakhradinov by decision in a really, really, really good fight, but I'm, I'm not super confident on that. So, um, you know, I, I, I still want to see the line and all that, but I'm picking Fakhradinov, man. Uh, next fight we have is in the women's strawweight division. We got Cheyenne Velismus versus Corey McKenna. Um, Cheyenne Velismus is 7-2. and two. She's currently sitting at minus 180. Corey Poppins McKenna is 7-2, and two, also currently sitting at plus 155. This girl, there's the same height. Um, Cheyenne Velismus is going to have a four and a half inch reach advantage. Um, but uh, yeah, man, this is going to be a, a stylistic matchup. Cheyenne, Cheyenne Velismus is an excellent kickboxer, man. She's got really good striking. She's really technical and crisp. Um, her punches come straight down the middle. She's got really good kicks. She's got really, really, really good movement. She's good at uh, moving across, you know, moving, coming in, striking two times, moving out, resetting, hitting a couple more strikes, moving, setting, um, always striking at her distance and range. And I really like that. Um, she's got, a, you know, decent power. Uh, she's not like a knockout girl. She did get the knockout over uh, the Paula when she was standing back up, kicked her right in the head. But um, she's not really a knockout girl. She's more of a volume girl. Um, and she's good, you know. She's like I said, good movement, good striking, all that good cardio. Corey McKenna, she's got decent striking. Her striking's not bad, but she has really good grappling, man. She has really good takedowns. She has really good submissions. She has really, really good top control, good ground and pound. You seen her last fight against uh Miranda Granger. She looked really, really good. Um, she could have looked good in her fight and her loss with uh what what is the girl's name that beat her? Um, Elise Reed. She could have beat her if she would have just wrestled her the whole time. She beat Kay Hansen. Um, had a nice back and forth grappling match. She she beat Vanessa Demopoulos in the Contender Series, and we know but Demopoulos is a good grappler, good striker, good wrestler. Um, I'm actually going to be taking a Corey McKenna in this fight. I think Corey McKenna has enough has the good enough striking. Um, to stay safe in the striking area. And I think her grappling is going to be way better. Even Cheyenne Velismus, Velismus when she was um, fighting uh, Mallory Martin, Mallory Martin right here was able to hold her up against the cage a lot in that fight, was attempting takedowns. And Mallory Martin's not near as good a grappler as Corey McKenna. I think Corey McKenna is actually going to be able to get her grappling going in this fight. Um, she probably will get beat up a little bit in that first round, you know, trying to strike. But once she gets her grappling going, I, I believe, I mean, if you watch Cheyenne Velismus versus um, Monastrat Ruiz, remember that fight? She just kept getting head and armed, taken down, could not get out of that all three rounds. And I feel like if, uh, if um, Monastek or whatever Ruiz can do that to her, I definitely feel like Corey McKenna, who is a way better fighter, can do that to her. Next fight is in the men's welterweight division. This is going to be a good fight. We have Jake Matthews sitting at 18 and 5, taking on Matt Semmelsberger, who is 10 and 2. Uh, Jake Matthews currently sitting at minus 240. Matt Semmelsberger is currently sitting at plus 200. Semmelsberger is going to have a two inch height advantage and a three inch reach advantage. Um, which will, you know, help him a little bit in the striking, but I don't think too much, man. Jake Matthews, this kid was, this kid, um, what is he, 28 years old, and he's been fighting in the UFC since he was 19 years old. A couple of his losses are one from, his, from when he was 19 and 20 years old. Um, very well-rounded, has really good striking, um, really good boxing. You've seen what he did to Andre Fihalo last fight. I went back and watched his fight with Jang Liang. He actually dropped Jang Liang in that win that he got over him uh, back in 2018. He actually dropped him a couple times in the first round, um, showed excellent grappling. That's one thing I do like about uh, Jake Matthews is he shows a really good fight IQ, man. When he needs to grapple, he grapples. When he needs to strike, he strikes, and he mixes it all in very, very well. Like I said, grown up in the UFC, he's fought very, very, very good fighters, Jang Liang, all kinds of people to, to build up where he is now, and he's looked really good in his last couple of fights. He got out grappled by Sean Brady, but, you know, that happens. Matt Semmelsberger, you know, 
10 and four doesn't really have that too many fights in his career yet but the fights he has have been like wars he's got good boxing he's got really good power um but he's kind of got slower not as good a technique as like a jake matthews or obviously even alex morono in the last fight that he fought um he can be taken down really easy he's got a decent get up game um he's got what, what he really uses is really good cardio um a lot of these guys like his fight um with the one dude where he he uh AJ Fletcher, that was a really good fight. Um, Fletcher was beating him up really good, ground and pounding him, taking him down, and then he just gassed at the end of that first uh, one and a half rounds. I think he came in on short notice and he gassed, and uh, Simmelsberger was able to take over. That's not going to happen here with Jake Matthews, man. Jake Matthews, I believe, will be able to piece up Simmelsberger a lot like uh, Alex Morono did, but um, I think he's going to be able to definitely mix in some grappling too on uh, Semmelsberger. Like Semmelsberger is a good athlete. He's a big guy. He's tough. Um, durable, but he's just his skill ain't up to level with like a Jake Matthews or Alex Morono. That's why you see them guys beating him because they're just better technically and they're more well rounded. You know, they've been doing it longer. Matt Simmelsberger was a football player in college and all that didn't even start. Um, MMA to after that, kind of like Eric Anders, you know, big athletic, big guy, throws hammers. So uh, Jake Matthews is going to have to stay on his P's and Q's and not get hit with one of them big old left hooks or right hands, right crosses that Matt Simmelsberger has. But um, he's better every single spot in this fight. And I expect him to get a pretty good, easy win here if he just fights good. I mean, it's going to be a tough fight, obviously. Uh, Simmelsberger ain't going nowhere. He's going to be there all three rounds. But um, give me Jake Matthews, man, and give me him by a, a three round decision. He, I, I see him winning all three rounds. Next fight is going to be a good one, man. Men's flyweight division. We got David Dvorak versus Manal Kopp. David Dvorak is 20 and 4, currently sitting at plus 200. Manal Kopp is uh, 17 and 6, currently sitting at minus 240. And, dude, this is going to be a technical striking match that's going to be phenomenal. Both these guys are super technical. Um, they, they both got really good kickboxing, really good striking. Um, David Dvorak, man, um, all really good forward pressure, really good at coming forward. He can throw good combos uh, with his boxing. He's his one of his best weapons, really, is his leg kicks, man. Um, you've seen against like Jordan Espinoza, he was able to land them leg kicks repeatedly. Bruno Silva, he was able to land them on him. Um, but uh, yeah, man, he he's just he's well rounded. He doesn't usually use his wrestling; he uses it defensively. But he's got good offensive and defensive grappling. I don't see this fight going to the ground. I see both of these guys. Um, it's going to be a striking match. Um, Manal Cop, man, this dude's um, electric. He's really good fighter. He's he's just like Dvorak, you know, good offensive and defensive grappling. But he really doesn't use it. He just uses it to keep the fight standing. And he's got phenomenal striking. He's so fast, so explosive, and so powerful, man, that it's, it's hard to do anything against this guy. Um, he's dangerous when he's putting on the pressure and output. Sometimes he can be low output and be getting backed up. And I see that happening a lot in this fight. I see these guys both throwing feints. I see them, um, Dvorak coming forward. They're both both very technical. They're both both very good fighters. And they both pretty much do the same thing, except now Cop's going to be a little bit more explosive and he's going to hit a little bit harder. And I see him land and some good shots and um i don't think that he finishes dvorak because dvorak is really really tough but i do see him maybe landing a couple knockdowns like Mateus nicolau did against dvorak and getting the win here um because dvorak does like to pressure forward does like to come forward and, and uh manau cop man he loves the forward pressure you've seen against like oday osborne was able to get him out of there with that flying knee um uh, Master Z, Zogalskis came after him and went, came with that forward pressure, and he actually finished Master Z, which is very, very, very hard to do. So give me Manal Cape, man. I'm going to take him by decision. I think he lands the harder punches, but I, I honestly do think that this is going to be a more of a technical, boring fight unless Manal Cape, uh, Cape does get the uh, knockout out of nowhere, you know. But um, Dvorak's very tough, very defensively sound, so that's going to be a really good fight. Next fight, man, is going to be so good. I cannot wait for this fight. Where is it at? I'm sorry. Um, Saeed Nurmaga, Medoff versus Sadyukov Kakramanov. Um, man, this is going to be a good one. We got Saeed Nurmaga Medoff, who's 16 and 2, currently sitting at minus 120. We got Sedio Cub, who is 10 and 2, currently sitting at plus 100. Um, both these guys are kind of similar in age. Sedio Cub is uh, four years younger, both the same size. Saeed has one inch of reach on him, man. This is going to be a really, really, really technical good fight. Both these guys are very well rounded. Saeed Nurmagomedov, not your average Nurmagomedov, man. This guy is actually um, a striker. He has really good spinning attacks. He actually uses them way too much, but but they work a lot of times like Ricardo uh, Hamos. Um, he was able to get him out of there with the spinning back kick to the body. Um, 
really good pressure, really good spinning back fist, spinning back kicks, really good takedown defense. Um, in a in a in a pretty good get up game, he doesn't um settle for being on the ground. He has pretty good boxing, but really wants to kick you more than anything. Um, I, I just I, I like this guy, man. It's it's weird to see Nurmagomedov striking like that, but it is what it is. It's almost like Ankalaev of last night, except throwing way more spinning shit. But um, yeah, man, he he showed good takedown defense against Hani Barsolas. Um, he was able to be grappled up against the cage a little bit, and I really didn't like that. But um, other than that, man, uh. Excellent, excellent, well-rounded, um, very dangerous with the striking, with the spinning attacks. The only thing I didn't like about him is it seems like he loses about 30% of his explosion by the second round. Still throwing stuff, still good takedown defense, but doesn't seem near as dangerous for a knockout or anything. He's about 70% of his power and explosion by that second round because he just throws too many spinning kicks. But um, really good, man, really, really good, man. Sedu Cub, man, this guy is really good. He's got a phenomenal wrestling, good judo tosses. Uh, he's got good striking. We haven't seen too much of it in the UFC because last fight, you know, he just ragged out Ronnie Lawrence um, and, and, you know, dominated him. And then the fight before that, when he finished Trevin Giles or Trevin Jones, I'm sorry, he actually was uh, held against the cage for most of the fight. And that's what kind of worries me again in this fight because he wasn't able to take down Trevin Jones. He was actually taken down by him once or twice. But uh, he came in on short notice on that fight, though, too. But showed excellent cardio, man, was able to get the choke on Jones and get him out of there in that third round. Um this is going to be a really good fight. Um, I would say the striking's pretty much even. Um, Sergio Cub can be hit though, man. He 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 got hit against uh uh Trevin Jones a couple times, couple a couple good solid hits, and he got uh KO'd with a flying knee in a regional scene. So he he can be hit. He he can be hit. Um, but uh if he doesn't get knocked out, I see Sedio Cub winning. I think he's got the better cardio. I would say that he's going to – I don't think that his wrestling is going to work this fight, actually. I think that it, maybe it can work more in, like, the third round. But I don't think he's going to – he couldn't take Trevin Jones down. I don't think that he's going to come out here and just repeatedly take uh, Saeed down. Um, but I do think that he's going to have the better cardio. So if he don't get knocked out in the first round, I think that he's going to be able to wear on Saeed and he's going to be able to get this win because his striking is really good, man. His, we haven't really seen too much of it yet, but he has really good power, really, really, really good. He has really good forward pressure, presses, presses, presses a really good pace that wears on guys. And I just think he's going to have the better uh, cardio than Nurmagomedov. And um, I think he's – the, he will win the wrestling exchanges here. So uh, give me give me Sedio Cub, man. I'm probably I'm just gonna watch this as a fan. It's gonna be so close, and it's a good enough fight just to watch as a fan. But I, I do like the over. But then you know it's kind of worrisome because Nurmagomedov can hit him with one of them crazy ass shots out of nowhere and get the finish. So um, yeah, man, just be careful about how you how you bet that fight. This next fight's gonna be a good one too. We got in the 155 pound division. Do not kill me in the comments if I if I uh, slaughter his name. It's Mahashet versus Mahashet versus Hafa Garcia. Mahashet is nine and one, currently sitting at plus one hundred. Hafa Garcia is fourteen and three, currently sitting at minus one twenty. And this should be a good fight. It's going to be a stylistic matchup. Um, Mahashet has good striking, really, really just good boxing. He uses some kicks, but he's got good striking. You see, he's got a really, really good, accurate right hand. Really likes to use it as a counter, and um, Steve Garcia fell right into that in his uh, in his first fight in his uh, debut. Man, he was able to knock him out. Looked really good, knocked him down a couple times. He looked pretty good on his um, contender series uh, fight. He got dropped in that first round, got hurt pretty bad, and I mean he was losing up until the the guy he fought kind of gassed out a little bit in that second round. But um, he's good, you know, good boxing. Young kid, he's only twenty three years old. You see, he's going to have a five uh six inch height advantage and a three and a half inch reach advantage which is huge but i don't know if it's going to matter man because hafa garcia has really good striking um you've seen his last fight i was i, I actually bet Dracar close and he looked phenomenal against Dracar close man it came down to that third round might not even have came down to it if the ref didn't stand these two up in the second round when hafa got him down he stood him up real quick which i was super happy with live but you know, looking back at it, you're like, that's that's just kind of kind of messed up. But man, yeah, I think that Hoffa, he's never been finished in 17 fights, super durable. Um, I think he's gonna be able to survive that first round. Uh, he's gonna use his grappling. Um, he's more well-rounded. He's he's definitely gonna have the grappling advantage here, and I think he's gonna use it. He's got the grappling experience advantage. Um, he's got the, like I said, the striking to uh hang with Machete, Machat, Machi, I don't know. 
whatever, man. You know what I'm saying. You know the thing, Joe Biden, the old Joe Biden. But uh, give me half of Garcia, man. I'm going to take half of Garcia. I don't know if he gets the finish. I don't know what uh, Mashat, because it's hard to find his um, regional scene stuff to see how he really does on the ground. But I'm going to assume coming from China, his wrestling is not going to be that great or jiu-jitsu. Um, so give me half of Garcia, and I, I really like that. I don't know if I'm going to bet him. I like the line where it's at, and I think he's the more well-rounded fighter, and I think that he should be more of a favorite. Um, you see he's number 52 in the world, where this kid's number 83. But um, it's a little recency bias. So, yeah, man, but uh, it should be a good fight. Just uh, be half of Garcia just needs to keep his head up, man, um, keep his chin down, hands up, and not get knocked out, and then work that wrestling game. Next fight fight is in the men's bantamweight division we got sergey morozov versus journey news journey newsome sergey is 18 and 5 currently sitting at minus 240 journey is 10 and 3 currently sitting at plus 200 sergey morozov man you know a russian dude really good wrestling good jujitsu he's got good boxing good power he um you see him hurt some people uh he can be hurt too he's kind of sloppy in his striking he hurt douglas silva d'andrage went for the finish gassed himself out he ended up getting finished in the second round but you see he has power um he's got some uh good wins good losses in his career you know he's got two losses the one to douglas in the ufc the one to douglas silva andrage and the one to umar nurmagomedov but he got a, a nice win over khalid taha and he got that nice win over julian paiva which um is a good win julian paiva is really nice Robin paiva whatever uh journey newsome man so Sergey Morozov, he's really well rounded. He's good. He's very experienced guy. Um, trains at a, a American Top Team, so that's always good. Journey Newsome, he's good. He's got good boxing. Very explosive guy. He's low output, but he does have explosive kicks. Um, explosive bat, spinning back fists. Um, pretty good power in his punches. He's a grappler though, but he really doesn't use it too too much in the UFC. Out of uh, his wrestling is pretty good. His jujitsu is pretty good. His get up game is really good. Um. He's a small guy. You see, he's going to be a, just a, in this fight. It's really not too much, actually, though, because he's going to be an inch shorter with a uh, half an inch of reach, which is weird because he's usually the way smaller guy. Um, but I, I do like him. He's a well-rounded fighter. He's very fast, uses good movement. He keeps fights to uh, slow, slow-paced fights, usually, with all of his movement, sticking to movement, moving like he did with his last fight with Ferdy Garcia. Looked pretty good in it, you know? Um I think that this fight's going to be a lot, lot closer than these odds uh, tell you. I don't think that Morozov's going to be able to just come out here and take Journey Newsom down, hold him down, and beat him up for three rounds. I think Journey Newsom's movement's too good for that. I think that um, he's got really good jujitsu, really good get-up game, and I think it's going to be really, really close. I'm still going to take Sergey because I do think that he'll be able to land the takedowns, um, so that's going to help him win some rounds. But the striking's going to be pretty even, pretty good. And I don't think, like I said, I don't think that it's just going to be three rounds of control. I think it's going to be a really close fight. So I'm definitely not going to um, be anywhere near this money line or anywhere on it. But I do like the over, man. Journey Newsome is uh, really durable unless he's got fighting a guy with this phenomenal head kick. And Sergey Morozov is very durable unless he's fighting a guy and he gasses out. Um, you see that right there? There's another thing, though. 34 in the world to number 69 in the world. So, you know, that's, uh, that's a lot of respect on his name at number 34. It's a big difference. But uh, give me Sergey Morozov by a decision. But like I said, not near as... Uh, near as dominant as it should be for a minus 240. The next fight, man, is um, another stylistic matchup. We got striker versus grappler. Julian Mark has the Cuban Missile Crisis is 9-3, and three, currently sitting at minus 165. Duran Wynn is 7-3, and three, currently sitting at plus 135. And as you see here, man, um, uh, Julian Marquez is going to be 8 inches taller with 2 inches of reach. Julian Marquez, man, um, a crate, you know, like a meat and potatoes fighter. Excellent power on his feet. Very, very explosive, but not like technical. Um, not like a, a phenomenal striker. He's just got power. He's he'll come at you. Um, the only thing I was watching a lot of tape, man. I did not like his fight with Maki Patolo, where he was pretty much out wrestled and out grappled for two rounds against a guy that's more of a brawler, not really a wrestle grappler. And um, then in the third round, like Julian Marquez does, he 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 can get beat up or or you know be getting even beat for two rounds and come back in that third with with his determination, his cardio, and just his forward pressure and just knock dudes out, man. You've seen it a couple times in his career. Um, you've seen it, uh, against Maki Patolo. He did that. I mean, he did it against Sam Alvey. That was easy, but like Darren Stewart, you know, that was a really good fight. Uh, Phil Hawes, all of them that he usually does that, man. He's usually getting beat up and then he can get out wrestled out technique, you know, and then, um, come back and get that third round knockout. And, uh, that's, what's keeping me away from this fight. Cause Duran win 
great wrestling, phenomenal wrestling. Like I said, very small guy, but phenomenal wrestling. He showed good cardio in his fight against Arroyo. He got beat up really bad against Phil Hawes in his last fight, but um, Phil Hawes had the wrestling to keep it standing. I think that Duran Wynn's going to be able to use his wrestling to get Julian Marquez down a lot. I don't think he'll be able to hang it, hand, um, hold him down that much. You know what I mean? Like the Julian Marquez will keep getting up, keep trying to get up. But uh, he was held down against Maki. But I believe, you know, Duran wins so little. It's so hard for him to hold these guys down. So it's going to be this exact same kind of fight. Duran wins going to be able to take Marquez down. He's going to be able to survive early on in that first round, half of the second. And by the second, you know, he ain't going to be able to start landing them takedowns. And once he has to start standing with this big old goon, man, Marquez is eventually going to land one of them giant shots on Duran win. I don't know if it's in the second round i don't know if it's the third round comeback as usual but i do know julian marquez will land a bomb on the round win and get him out of there so give me julian marquez by second or third round ko this next fight's another one of these tricky fights because you have a big big favorite um that's fighting you know a late replacement guy but this late replacement guy is actually the real deal man we got amir albazi 15 and 1 currently sitting at minus 435 Versus Alessandro Costa, 12 and 2, currently sitting at plus 350. And Amir Albazi, man, what can you say about this guy? He is a giant prospect. He's very well rounded, um, has really, really good forward back uh, pressure boxing with good leg kicks, phenomenal wrestling, right? He has phenomenal wrestling and world class jujitsu. I mean, he's out here tapping out black belts, he's already tapped out two black belts. Um, in the UFC alone, you had Figueredo, who is a black belt, and um, uh, Malcolm Gordon, who is a black belt. Now, Bazi submitted both of them. He's just really well-rounded, really good, really tough, really good cardio. There's there's nowhere that this guy is not good. There's there's nowhere that this guy is not good. Um, he's probably going to be fighting for a championship one day. But the guy he's fighting here in Alejandro Alessandro Costa, man, this dude is phenomenal. Like if you, he's a high-level black belt himself. A real black belt too, a Brazilian, you know, a nice Brazilian black belt with phenomenal grappling. He's got phenomenal striking. He's only 26 years old. He's going to be one inch shorter with one inch reach disadvantage. But dude, this guy's good, man. I watched his his fights, and this guy's good. He's good everywhere the fight goes. He's good in a bra. He can fight a low um a low output fight like he did on the Contender Series and win, or he can get, be in a bra, get dropped, get back up, drop the guy, um, you know, land takedowns do everything man this kid's good uh once he has a couple more fights in the ufc you know he's not on short notice he might get to see albazi again here in a couple years because i really do think that this kid's going to be around for a while but in this one um you know albazi i just think he's going to be too much he's been training he's been in the, the the ufc experience he's been training for ufc fights for the last couple years um they're both super well-rounded but albazi is just going to be a little bit better and like i said uh the short notice is going to hurt costa but this kid looks like the type of kid that stays in shape man um yeah man i'm taking amir albazi i'm going to take him by decision i'm going to be looking at the over in this fight i want to see what the line is and um yeah, man, it's going to be a really good fight. This Costa kid is no joke. So at plus 350, I mean, Amir Abazi, it, it, at minus 450, I don't think he should be that high in this fight. I do think the kid's good, but the guy he's fighting, this the kid's legit. So give me Abazi, but uh, man, that fight, like I said, it, it's going to be worrisome if, if you bet on that one. Next fight is in the men's lightweight division. We got Drew Dober versus Bobby king green Drew dober is 25 and 11 currently sitting at minus 165 and bobby green is 29 13 and 1 currently sitting at plus 135 drew dober man phenomenal muay thai background this kid has phenomenal power kicks you see how thick his legs are he's got phenomenal boxing with excellent power man his right hand is freaking money he's knocked uh knocked, knocked out half harass knocked out a lot of people man he hurts people hurt um uh, Benio Dariush really bad a couple times. Hurt Brad Riddell bad a couple times. You seen a figure finish Rafael Alves last fight, man. The kid is tough. The kid's durable. Um, he's always in your face. He's always coming forward. You know, a couple drawbacks. He's got terrible takedown defense. He can be taken down, but I don't think he's going to have to worry about that in this fight. I don't think Bobby Green um, uses any wrestling. I think that this is going to be a striking match. Um, like I said, Drew Dober, man, powerful boxing, powerful leg kicks, very, very, very uh, powerful. Got, he he slows down a little bit after that first round. Like he still fights hard. He's still he's still putting out um big pressure, but he his technique goes down just a little bit. That's what happened to him in the Riddell fight. He knocked down Riddell once or twice in that first round, fought real hard, and then the second started slowing down. 
That's when Rudell started picking it up and um, ended up getting the uh, unanimous decision win. Bobby Green, man, you know, wrestler, boxer. He doesn't really use his wrestling, just uses his boxing really good. He has really good movement, man. When I was going into this fight, I was thinking Dober all day. But um, Bobby Green, he he has really good movement. He uses a nice shoulder roll for all of his strikes. He, 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 um, he doesn't take any damage, man. And I think in this first round, Dober's going to be able to land some good shots like he does. Because if you watch Bobby King against uh, Fiziev, that's what I wanted to watch for this fight. You know what I mean? That's, that's the same style, except obviously Fiziev's going to be better than Dober. And uh, Bobby Green fought well with him. He was making Fiziev uh, miss a lot. He was putting a little bit of pressure on Fiziev. Um, and just look good, you know, landed some good shots of his own. He got a little bit beat up in that first round, but when they slowed down and they both came, uh, you know, about the same speed in that second and third round, he he put up a really good fight with Fiz Fiziev. So, um, Fiziev, whatever. Uh, so I think he's going to do that with Dober here, man. I think that the first round is going to be tough. Dober's going to be hitting him hard. You know, he's going to hit Dober hard, but he's going to shoulder on. I think once Dober starts slowing down in that second round, not slowing down, I'm not saying he gasses, but he's just not as explosive and as crisp. Um, because he throws power in everything that he throws. I think that's when Bobby Green can start taking over. Now, the problem is I'm not betting on I like Bobby Green. I'm going to take him to get the close decision. But he fights to the level of his opponents, man. And that's why all of his fights are so close. And they're like split decision, even with people they shouldn't be, is because, you know, he basically is point fighting. He's hitting them. They hit him. He hits them. They reset. All that. So, um I just think that this fight's going to be too close to call in the cards. It's going to be tit for tat on here. Um, but I'm going to take Bobby Green. I'm going to say that he uh, he looks good. He ends up getting that um, win. He's going to be two inches taller, that one inch of reach. And I think that in that second and third, he starts taking over and gets him a close decision win and an all-striking match. And I'm going to be looking at the over in that fight, too. Next fight is in the men's featherweight division. We got Alex Caceres versus Julian Arosa. And this has no choice but to be a really exciting fight. Both these guys are all action fighters. We have Alex Caceres, 19 and 13, currently sitting at plus 155. Julian Arosa, 28 and 9, currently sitting at minus 180. And yeah, man, um, Alex Caceres, very well-rounded fighter. Uh, his striking's been getting better and better as he's been getting older. His grappling's improved. He used to be able to be taken down and held down. Not no more. Really good uh, uh, takedown defense. He's got really good get-up game. He's got really good jiu-jitsu and offensive Um grappling when he's on top these days too like you seen uh when he choked out Choi, he just took his back choked him out real quick um he's got his karate style kung fu style striking which is good man and the kid's very very tough and durable dude you can watch him fight um all of his fights like he he can take some big big shots he took some really big shots in that Choi fight survived it ended up coming back and getting the win um but yeah man i just like his real his movement he, he has really good movement he just he's a veteran he's been fighting forever um and he knows how to survive and he knows how to fight guys and this like and he's he's big for this division where julian erosa is usually a lot bigger than his opponents he's only going to have uh two inches of height and one inch of reach here julian erosa man another dude these guys are like the same man very veteran guys you see one's 33 one's 34 they both got a ton of experience in the ufc they both um I like well-rounded. They both have good offensive and defensive grappling, but don't use it too much. They like to um, keep it standing and fight. But in this fight, um, if they do, I would think it would be Julian Arosa would be able to land the takedowns. Julian Arosa has a uh, really good striking with really good power. The dude is really tough. I would call him durable, but he can get put out by really big strikers. Here's something I really wanted to point out in this fight. Um, Alex Caceres has one win in 32 fights by a KO, and that was due to an eye injury. He's only KO'd one guy in 32 fights, man. So I don't think Julian Arosa, if you're backing him, you don't have to worry about him getting some um, uh, knockout because usually, you know, that's the way to beat Arosa. Not a lot of guys beat him on decision. You've been seeing him look great recently going to the cards. He beat Akima Dawadu. He choked out freaking um, – uh, Charles Jordan. He choked out Sean Woodson. I mean, the kid's on a run. He's looking really, really good. He had that one setback to Choi where he got knocked out early. But like I said, you don't have to worry about that in this fight. Um, he, these guys are both well-rounded. Julian Arosa, to me, I think he's going to land the harder strikes standing. So that'll help him win some rounds. And then I think that he'll be able to land um, the grappling. He'll be able to land the takedowns. But I don't know, man. This fight is going to be really, 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 really good. Like, it is. It should be almost dang near like a pick -em. I don't know. I don't really mind the 180 on Erosa because he does hit harder. He's been beating the better people, but they're both really good. Like if you want MMA math, don't always add up. But Caceres, um, he kind of styled on Steve Peterson and uh, uh, 
um, beat him pretty easily. You know, Peterson couldn't get none of his game going. And then Julian Arosa fought Peterson. They went life and death and went to split decision. So I don't know. You can't, you know what I mean? Everybody says MMA and math don't add up. I don't know who said that because sometimes it does, but I don't know if it's going to miss. So give me Julian Arosa landing the harder shots and him being able to land the takedowns when it comes to the uh, grappling part of the fight to be able to win some rounds for the judges. Because I do think that goes decision. Alex um, Caceres is as durable as they come, and he doesn't finish anybody. Next fight, dude, this fight is going to be so good. We got Armand Sarukian versus Demir Uzmagulov. Armand is 18 and 3, currently sitting at minus 170. Demir is 24 and 1, currently sitting at plus 145. And dude, this is going to be a phenomenal fight. Armand Sarukian, you know him. Um, phenomenal wrestling, pretty good jujitsu, excellent ground and pound, really good striking. He has pretty good boxing, throw some nice spinning back fists and elbows. You've seen him hit um uh Gamrat with one of them. Um, decent body kicks and stuff, but he he really wants to be grappling. That's that's how he's going to win most of his fights. You know, um, he's not really a KO guy striking, but um, he he's good at mixing in his grappling and wrestling. He's kind of small. He's five seven with a seventy two inch reach, where uh, Demir is going to be five ten, three inches taller with an inch and a half of reach. And um, yeah, man, pretty much what Armand does, Demir does too. Demir is a phenomenal wrestler. Um, really, really phenomenal wrestler to where I know that he's going to be able to stop um, Armand's wrestling. If Mateus Gamrat was able to, Demir is definitely going to be able to. Um, I don't really get why Armand's a favorite here. He's kind of like got the Darren Till thing on the betting. It's like Darren Till, people bet him because he knocked down Robert Whitaker a couple years ago but lost the fight, um, you know, and hadn't really looked that great. Armand Sarukian, although he has looked great and good in some other fights, um, his claim to fame is taking down Islam Makiev one time. You know what I mean? And so everybody bets him thinking that he's going to win and just out wrestle people. But his way to win, he's a good striker, but his way to win is to out wrestle and out grapple people. And he's not going to out wrestle Demir, dude. Demir is a phenomenal wrestler, phenomenal grappler himself. You go watch any of his fights, man. He out wrestled or out wrestled and grappled Tiago Moises for three rounds easily. Um, I'm telling you, man, the dude is good. He's got a phenomenal jab. His striking's really good. You've seen it in his last fight against Guran Kutsalaze. Um, that was a phenomenal fight, and he was able to beat him in that fight stage standing the whole three rounds, and he was out striking and piecing him up with that jab. Um, I think Demir has the same, um, if not better, wrestling, and I think Demir has better striking, and he's the bigger guy. So I, I really think Demir wins. Um, I don't know where Armand wins this. I don't think he has better striking. I think Demir is way better striking than Mateus Gamrot. Mateus Gamrot was looking good with the striking against Armand. You know what I mean? Like, Armand's striking is not that great. I, I think Demir has the, the same, if not better, wrestling. And I think Demir has the uh, better striking, man, the longer striking, too. Better jab um, works works more of his tools than Armand. So Armand's all explosion. So, um. Give me Demir Ismagulov, man. I, I, I really like him in this fight. I actually think that, um, like I said, he's going to have the better striking. He's going to have the wrestling to keep it standing. Um, Armand was having trouble wrestling with, like, uh, Matt Fervola. And although Matt Fervola has pretty good wrestling, Demir's like a world-class wrestler, man. This dude's really good. So uh, give me Demir Ismagulov, man. I'm not betting Armand based off the fact that he took down um, Islam one time three years ago on short notice, four years ago. Main event time, everybody. We have Jared Cannonier versus Sean Strickland. Jared Cannonier is 15 and 6, currently sitting at plus 100. Sean Strickland is 25 and 4, currently sitting at minus 120. And this is going to be a really good fight, man. It's it's in the small cage, so that makes it even better for these guys. You got Jared Cannonier, man, phenomenal striker, excellent kickboxer, has really good power in his hands, throws really phenomenal hard leg kicks, throws hard body kicks, throws hard head kicks. Um Excellent boxing, good pressure, um, good head movement. Uh, you've seen his uh, fight. I went back and watched this fight with Robert Whitaker. I watched this fight with Calvin Gastelum, who are boxers. You know, um, to me, even better strikers than Sean Strickland, man. He looked really good in that fight with Calvin Gastelum. Like, Sean Strickland, well, the fight with Calvin Gastelum, like, um, 
Gaslam has really, really, really good boxing with really good power with really fast hands. And um, Jerry Cannonier, man, was able to outbox him. He did get a little boxed up in the second round, but dude, Calvin Gaslam's a savage. Um, but Kevin Cannonier pretty much took over one every round after that. He shows good car cardio, good toughness. Like I said, um, he's going to be using leg kicks, body kicks, and head kicks, where Sean Strickland doesn't really use kicks or check kicks. Um, Jerry Cannonier, very powerful. He used to be a heavyweight. Um, he's a big dude for this division. It says 5'11", 77.5, where he's going to be two inches shorter, but he's going to have an inch and a half of reach. But his his height is huge, man. Um, I think that he's going to be around the same height as Strickland. Jerry Kennedy is a giant 185er. Like I said, used to be a heavyweight guy. Um, good offensive and defensive grappling. Can be taken down a little bit, but a great get-up game. He's never been taken down and held down. Great cardio, great power. You've seen he held that cardio up in the Derek Brunson fight where he kept getting taken down. He actually got stunned a little bit. He just comes through with that power and keeps it long, keeps it keeps it throughout the whole fight, five rounds. Um even with uh, Gaslam, man, looks really, really good. You've seen him take out uh, Jack Hermanson with a big shot, was able to finish him, survive the grappling with him. Sean Strickland, I like him as a fighter. I like him as a person. He's a crazy guy, man. He's got really good boxing, um, uh, excellent jab. He's got pretty good power in both hands. He throws nice hooks with both hands when he does uh, let go of them because usually he's just throwing a jab. Uh, really good forward pressure, really good cardio, obviously really good toughness. But he doesn't really use kicks too much. Um, he can be low output at times. Like I watched him fight his fight with Jocko, and he came out with Christoph Jocko, and he was beating him up in the first round using really good boxing, and then just his output slowed way off in that second and third, and it actually became a closer fight. Same thing with Jack Hermanson, man. He just really didn't impress me against Jack Hermanson in five rounds where, you know, it was, it was a kind of a close fight in a striking match where Jerry Cannonier just put him out. Um I really like Cannoneer in this fight, to be honest. I think that he's got the boxing to um, match up with Sean Strickland. Another thing I wanted to go over even before I get into that, too, is if we look at Sean Strickland, he really hasn't beat anybody to be a favorite over Jared Cannoneer, man. You see to Norlead to, Nordine Tlaib, that was at 170. But since he came back up to 185, Jack Marshman and eh. Brandon Allen, that was a pretty good win. Um, Christoph Jocko, like I said, that was a close decision. Uriah Hall, he really didn't look that great in that fight. It was kind of a boring fight. And you know, Uriah Hall isn't Jerry Cannonier by any means. Gets tapped out in a, a grappling. But then Jack Hermanson, split decision. Like I said, he didn't look that phenomenal there. Like he didn't separate himself in the striking from Jack Hermanson like he should if he, if he needs to be a champion. Then obviously he got knocked out by Pereira. But to me, Jerry Cannonier, man, just as good boxing, if not better. He's actually going to be throwing with more power. He uses his kicks. He kicks the shit out of legs. And Sean Strickland, heavy boxing, heavy on his front leg and doesn't check leg kicks. Um, Cannonier is going to be the more well-rounded fighter. I don't see this fight going to the ground. And um, I just see Cannonier landing the harder strikes. He may even be able to get Strickland out of there just like Pierre did if he can hit him with a good combination. But um, I just be I just see Cannonier. He's got the cardio to match him. He's got the size and um, you know athletic ability to match him. I think he's actually going to have the better striking. He's going to have the more versatile striking. And um, I just think he's going to be the better fighter over five rounds, man. So give me Jared Cannonier. I don't know if I'll bet him. I may get around to betting him. We'll see where this line goes. If I can get even plus 100 looks really good to me, to be honest. I would like to get him. I hope people keep betting Strickland. But, um, yeah, man, if you look at Cannonier's record towards Strickland's, dude, it's way different. You got Cannonier just destroying Jack Hermanson. Really close fight with Robert Whitaker. Beating Calvin Gastelum. That's better than any win that, that Sean Strickland's ever had by far. Beats Derek Brunson, which is a better win than Strickland's had by far. He's beat Anderson Silva. He's beat David Branch, you know. These are heavier fights when he's back here fighting Glover. But, dude, the dudes beat some really good dudes. And I don't think the age of being a, almost 39 years is caught up with him at all. He's looked good in all of his fights. He looked, you know, against Izzy, he, he was gun shy, but he won't be here. So, give me Jared Cannonier, man. I really think that he gets the win here. And I really think that it's going to be a good fight. Um. I appreciate everybody checking out my breakdown video again. I'm hoping um, I'm going to put in five good bets like I always do, and we're hoping to get another clean sweep here, go three out of four weeks, end the year, get up to, you know, 85, 90 units. Let's do it, man. Um, I appreciate everybody checking it out. Check us out Wednesday night, um, uh, Wednesday night, and come hang out with us Saturday. Grab a couple beers, grab some smokes, grab some food, and come hang out with us all Saturday. Watch the fights, man. Um, get some good live betting spots and just have a great time, man. So appreciate all you guys, man. I will see y'all later.